Hey, welcome back. You're watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco. It is a thirsty Thursday, and uh, hopefully right now you're thirsty for a Democrat and a Republican to mix it up on the topics of the day. We do this segment every single day, and uh, it's basically my favorite segment of the show. We show our true bipartisanship. All voices are heard. One rule is we have thoughtful conversation. At the end, we shake hands and part friends. Two great ones joining us today. They've both been on before. Sam Spicconi joins us today. He is a uh, Democratic strategist. He's also with Marathon Strategies. And our very own in-house legal counsel, Manny Alicandro, joins us. He's a uh, well-known attorney, ran for New York City public advocate, and a, uh, a uh, well, well-shined-up Republican. So we got a good one for you two today. Now, uh, Sam, I want to start with you. The New Hampshire primary. First things first, we still haven't counted up the votes from Iowa yet, but we're talking about New Hampshire. How much does that hurt whoever the leader is that this muddled results in Iowa? I think, I think it doesn't hurt them as much uh, substantively. I think it hurts them. I mean, there's some you know, optics challenges, and I think that it was just a little bit of a hassle for some of the, the, the candidates to come out of Iowa without the kind of the prime time speeches that they wanted. But I mean, there are clear narratives that are starting to come out of it anyway. I mean, Pete's emerged. I mean, he said he was victorious and he's taken heat for, for saying that before the, the, the final votes came out. But I mean, he's positioned well. You know, Bernie's looking very strong. And hold up, but hold up. Like, sorry to interrupt you, but I must. Where's the outrage? I mean, the, the fix is in. I mean, John spoke about this yesterday. Uh -huh. There's something going on in Iowa that reeks. The Iowa caucus was rigged, right? <laughs> the Des Moines Register did not release the final poll on Sunday, uh -huh. which clearly influenced Monday. And then there's a bug with this app and this technology yeah, company so and all these relationships. I mean, are you kidding me? Sam, you're, I, I, know you're, I know you're a thoughtful guy. We've agreed uh -huh. on, some, on some thoughtful things. Yeah. I did a little thing yesterday uh -huh. where this woman, Tara McGowan, who's the founder of Shadow, uh -huh. her husband is the chief strategist for Pete Buttigieg's campaign. Yeah. So Shadow app. Yeah. Buddha Judge paid Shadow 42 G's, mm -hmm. and on Sunday night, the night before Iowa, Chief Strategist for Buddha Judge, founder of the Shadow app, and Troy Price, the Iowa Democratic Party chair, are having beers and posting pictures on Twitter. So does it look a little shady? Well, we can take it through piece by piece. So first of all, I think, and I, I don't, I'm not affiliated with any particular candidate, but I think we know, know by now, based on the records that have come out, that Pete wasn't the only one who had paid money to that company. He paid them for licensing for some tech he paid software. The most, but. Yeah, well, Biden also paid them. Kirsten Gillibrand paid them. That's, there was not a unique relationship. I mean, second of all, I think there's a difference between you know problems that were caused and have been acknowledged as a result of that process versus a failure of the system. I mean, the reality is that there weren't votes that were lost. Everything was documented on paper and even, frankly, on Twitter or in person. So it just took a lot longer for it to come out. Was it a really big problem? Like, yeah, definitely. And I think for Democrats, was it extremely frustrating and, frankly, the exact opposite of the way you want to start a crucial primary process towards the strategy of you know, unification and defeat President Trump? Yeah, it was a really doesn't big problem. Doesn't that benefit Pete? But and it, 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 doesn't that benefit Pete. both Pete and Biden? Doesn't that benefit Pete? The muddled Biden? results. Who, um, who are the benefactors other than Trump? I mean, I, I'm not sure how you can say that anything that happened as a result of the Iowa caucus has benefited Biden. He looks, he, he, he you know, as opposed to, you know, the, all the polling going into the Iowa caucuses, I mean, he, I think he, he acknowledged it. He said it was a gut punch. He wouldn't have said that if he felt like he was in a great position. Um, well, so it clearly hurt Bernie, right? I mean, Bernie is the most damaged. I'm not I sure mean, that. Bernie I'm not should sure take that's legal the case. action. His campaign should take legal action no, against I th Iowa. I, th I, think I mean, that that's, that's prime time. They were not ready for prime time. No. A complete debacle. A complete failure. I mean, it's, it's fair for Republicans to say that about Bernie because I think that there's an interest in kind of creating a lot of tension between Bernie and the other candidates for strategic yes, reasons. Yes, we love that. But idea. I think you know if. If, if 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 a Bernie if someone were to tell a Bernie supporter, oh, the Iowa caucus was rigged, you guys really got screwed. I I've mean, been I would saying look, that I, for two days. I, yeah, I, would, I think I would, true. I, would, I would look at it from the outside and say that's not really a bad way to get screwed. I mean, he came out looking you know quite strong. I mean, his his, his operation performed very well, and I mean, he's well positioned. He's leading in the polls in, in New Hampshire. I mean, I think the reality is, the reality separate from the discussion we're having is that. Mainstream voices on the Democratic side and you know uh, big money donors and Democrats—they're more tense about Bernie than they were going into Iowa. They were hoping he would but fail. There's no way that Pete Buttigieg would be leading. I mean, it's clearly how Pete. Pete is not 
the top tier candidate. How There's is, no way that Pete is a top tier candidate. There's no way. I'm not convinced that Buttigieg is a top tier candidate or he ever will be. This no. clearly helped Pete well, and I was, hurt Bernie big time and, and, and obviously hurt Biden as well. I was not a diverse electorate, obviously, compared to some of the other primary states coming up. So I think the question is going to be how does Pete and how does everybody perform in those states? I mean, the same question is going to be asked of Bernie. Comparison, and, you know, the reality is that Joe Biden's hoping that when he gets to South Carolina, the, a, a more black electorate is going to be in his favor. The reality is that it might take too long to get there and it's going to be in a worse position. I just think the momentum, if you win Iowa, you're in great shape. You, get, you have tremendous momentum if you come out of Iowa successful. I mean, that's, that's been the history, who but won, I think, you know. Say, let's let's do a pop quiz. As of right now, yeah. who won Iowa? Who won Iowa? Do we even know? Uh, are you that's what I'm asking. You're talking about narrative, or you're talking about? No, I'm talking about who won. In terms of the votes, it looks like a statistical kind of dead heat right now. We're waiting for the kind of final percentages to come in. How but could that be? How could how could that be? All right, guys, I'm gonna, we're gonna pick this up in a moment. We're gonna we're gonna go to Donald Trump's at the podium now. We're gonna go to Donald Trump 